I'm at the home of Sir Patrick Moore, the great astronomer and legendary broadcaster whose work has inspired millions around the world to take up stargazing. And I'm here today to ask for his views on the future of space exploration. Why is space exploration important? Difficult. All sciences are linked. Talk about space exploration is linked with physics, chemistry, and medicine too. For example, not so long ago, I was in America, in a hospital there, and they were examining a heart of an unborn child using space, using equipment developed for use in space. It's all linked up. Also, the more knowledge we have, the better. Do you think it's important that? more people go into space to see if it will change the way people think about our planet? Going into space, we see the Earth as it really is. We don't know how unimportant we are. And um, also, don't forget that um, space research is the business of all nations. The one thing that could unify the Earth. I don't think it will, but it could do. The one thing, the one thing that might do, might do the trick. So perhaps we need a greater political will it's absolutely essential. If we get getting into space, it's got to be done together. We're all pieces of the Earth. And it's got to be fully international. And that's where I think a, a lunar base will be a great help, because that's got to be international. We are a disunited planet. And we, nations have their own leaders. And uh, it all depends upon the quality of those leaders. And looking at the present leaders inspires me with a feeling of no confidence at all. <laughs> What are your thoughts on private enterprise in terms of furthering space exploration through private company activities? Uh, space is going to, going to become quite common. After all, think of the way now, um, the South Pole. Easy. But um, very difficult a hundred years ago. In a hundred years' time, going to the moon may be just as easy as that. What the cause of all for the entire situation would be contact from another civilization, and there must be plenty up there. I mean, a hundred thousand million stars in our galaxy, and that's in one galaxy. They must be there. We can't cross interstellar space. There are many races that can. If they do and come here or let us know, we are then betting on an entirely different wicket. <laughs> Psychologically, the impact that would have. Uh, is a fascinating thought, isn't well, it? People have said that it's, it's um, dangerous to make ourselves known. I don't agree. Any race that could cross into stellar space and come here would have got, got far further than we have, would have put war behind it. I'd like to take a look at the moon now. You published your first paper on the moon, I think, at the age of... 13. 13. Mm, oh, yeah. And studied the moon and mapped the moon... Can you tell me how you provided some information to the Russians and to the Apollo program during um, the... I might have been a very, very minor part in a very large program. Don't get me wrong, I was a, a very minor figure. It couldn't have been more so. But the moon, as you know, keeps the same face turned towards the Earth, but it's yeah. tipped slightly. You see sometimes a little way around one side, a around the other. And those areas brought in and out of visibility are called the vibration areas, and they're horribly foreshortened. So difficult to map. And I was trying to study those. And when the Russians sent their first probe round the moon, got the first view back of the moon's far side, to see how near I'd been through trying to listen. I was fairly happy. How important is the role of the amateur astronomer? Amateur astronomy now is a very important science. Of, and it's the one science, I think, where professional amateurs work side by side, hand in hand. And amateurs do think that the professionals haven't got time to do, don't want to do, or literally can't do. And that does come along. And don't forget your amateur of today is your professional of tomorrow. So it's a very important study. What would your advice be for someone interested but worried that it's probably a little bit too technical for I'll them? I'll tell you what I did. I was a boy. <laughs> um, I built a book first of all, little books up there. I then got a pair of binoculars and went outside and learnt my way around the sky, which isn't difficult at all. The constellations don't change. I did that next. And uh, at that stage, looked around for a society to join. There were plenty now. There were a few there, and I did join one. 
And I began looking around what I'm most interested in. It happened to be the moon. And so um, I concentrated upon that. I think that I did get, get, get us across a telescope and got involved with moon mapping. So that's how I started. I said, do some reading, learn your way around the sky, buy a pair of binoculars, see what you're most interested in, and then graduate to a telescope. You've spent a lifetime with your mind and your eyes on the moon. Do you ever have a regret about not physically s stepping foot on the moon? I'd have to there. <laughs> I was the wrong age, the wrong nationality, not qualified, no chance at all. But I'm, I'm glad I played a very, very minor part in the Lunar program. I'd love to have gone there, but um, alas, not for me, I'm afraid. Patrick Moore, Knight of the Realm, incredible human being. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Good to have seen you.